and whoever is using it was a complete moron. And I do not feel bad for saying that because the fact that they not only messed up stuff with the front end of the truck, but they also messed up with the rims and didn't even align the truck because you guys saw the page that I showed you yesterday. The alignment was supposed to be done from them and it was not aligned. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping that after today, I won't have to make videos like this anymore. I know that a lot of other people that do YouTube are like, oh, I love it when I can make problem videos, but it's not fun for me because it costs me money. That being said though, in the first part of this video, we're actually going to head over to Doug's place. He's gonna be doing the wrap on the Rebel. So we're gonna go over that first and foremost. And then in the second half of the video, I'm gonna go over the problems that have popped up on the Rebel since last video. It's kind of disappointing, but let's just get right into all of that. Like I said, we've gotta get over to get the truck set up for getting wrapped and hint. One of the problems has to do with this. Anyways, yep, let's all head out. Boom, ready to go. We just got here to Elite Vinyl Works and we're finally getting the wrap done. I am super, super excited. I just saw the roll for the color that I chose and it looks so much better in person. Like the pictures, but it looks so much better in person. I am actually gonna go over one part of the wrap with you guys because I do have a question on something with the wrap before we like finalize everything with it. So it's not gonna be at the color about this point, but it's gonna be about something else. So let's head over to the other side, look at the truck and yeah. Like I said, if you need window tint, vinyl work, clear bra, any of that kind of stuff, give Doug a call, he will hook you up. So we've got the truck in the shop here and this is what I was gonna ask you guys. So I'm gonna unveil part of the wrap right now, kind of, sort of. So you can see the bumpers have like the matte color and so do the fender flares. But this part's gloss black so we're making that all matte black so it all matches kind of all the way around the truck, essentially. And then also the skid plate, we are gonna be wrapping that um, kind of like that same sort of like, matte. I might be using the wrong color, whatever, but I'm just assuming it's matte black. Anyways, so we're gonna wrap the skid plate so everything matches with all the bumpers. But the one thing I was gonna ask you is, so you can see on all of the rams, these um, the new body style rams, they've got these two little things on the hood here that basically you could put stripes on. So what we're thinking is doing two stripes, matte, so the same matte black that's gonna be on the bumpers, just all the way down over onto the roof and all the way down the truck. I want you to leave that down in the comment section below if you think that would be a good idea, or if you think that I should just do the color change and just leave it like that, no stripes on the hood. Like I said, just leave that down and yeah, we're about to get to work. So let me explain the process of what's gonna be happening very briefly. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out all the lights, so like the headlights, not sure if we're gonna have to take off the grill or not, um, but if we do, maybe have to take off the grill so we can get in here. We won't have to take off the bumper because under here, it's pretty easy to fold vinyl under, which is gonna be good. And then the skid plate again, not sure if we're gonna have to take it off or not, might be able to fold the vinyl under that part. And then the other stuff that I've been pulled off, so we'll have to do the fender flares and then on the hood, I'm assuming these vents and stuff are gonna have to be pulled off just so we can get the vinyl on them. But I've seen other videos of like people taking the vents off the trucks and literally they just like pop right out just like on the Jeeps. And then have we're not gonna wrap the mirrors, so we're just keeping these black. I read your comments on the video yesterday, so we're keeping that all black. And then typically door handles and all that kind of stuff usually have to come off. And then again, back fender flares. The rear bumper, that's another one we're not 100% for sure about because it's somewhat easy, but then you can see the silver kind of goes down in that area, so might have to take off the rear bumper. And then obviously the rear tail lights. And then these molding, the moldings on the top, maybe, maybe not. It just depends on how easy it is to work with. The thing about um, wrapping something is it just depends on exactly what you have to do on the vehicle. And so you kind of just play it by ear. You don't just like take everything apart. You take it apart after you see that it won't work when you're trying to put the vinyl on. And then I found out something cool yesterday about the thing that I talked about yesterday. So you can actually, I did find out you can remove these on both sides of the bed or you can place the rack. And then I did look up, um, I think it's called like the fast truck lane, whatever. I don't watch their channel. I know that they're a big channel, but it's just not something that I'm really into watching. But I did see the Rebel build that they did and they put one of the racks up here with a couple lights. If I did something like that, I would have at least five lights, if not more at the top. So I feel like it would look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. So please leave that down in the comment section below if you think I should do that rack. And if you think I should, then I will start calling Mopar and see what we can get done on the rack. And then another thing is, do you think I should add an aftermarket exhaust? I like how quiet the truck is, but I have been thinking about maybe adding an exhaust. Leave that down in the comment section below if you think I should add an exhaust. And on that note, we are gonna be heading out 
for the day so that Doug can get to work on the wrap and then I will show you the again the vehicle that I'll be driving while he's wrapping the truck. Well I just realized that the vehicle is locked but this is the vehicle that I am borrowing for the weekend while the truck is getting wrapped. It's like the absolute most basic truck that you can get. It's called the Express Package. Literally has nothing to it. So I'm literally going from like a fully loaded Rebel panoramic sunroof off-road package to base model work truck for the weekend. Kind of sad, but at least I'm getting something to drive, right? So I will try to get an update on Saturday with the wrap. So that'll be all in the like wrap unveil video. So I'm gonna try to get an update on like part of the process and kind of show you guys the truck when it's all taken apart. Hopefully, just depends on my schedule. I'm gonna be really busy tomorrow. And then now let's get into the not so fun part of the video. Okay, so let's get into the issues with the truck. So there's three main things that I'm gonna go over and that's really the only things that are happening wrong um, with the truck right now. And then I'll kind of go over the time frame for everything getting fixed. So the first thing that all of you already know about and that's the first thing that I'll go over is you know stuff with the front end. It was making weird noises, a lot of stuff wasn't tightened up and all that. So I got an alignment yesterday, I got things tightened up and well, there's a problem. So it's gonna be hard for me to convey this onto video, but it's kind of like in the general front area. It just doesn't come through um, sound wise on camera very well. I tried to get video of it yesterday, but it just didn't come through. It's still kind of making this strange kind of like knocking sound. It's not as bad as what it used to be, but it's still there. So I'm gonna to have to get it taken into service and get that taken care of. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm guessing it's just a loose component or something like that because the suspension is driving smooth. The truck's all aligned, so it's gotta be something else with the front end. But there's something that I wanna emphasize here and I kind of wanna go back and explain the whole story a little bit better because I noticed in the comment section below with the last video, some of you were basically by your answers, I could tell you're confused by exactly what happened. So let me just get into all of that. So first and foremost, I take the truck on Saturday night to get a leveling kit. And we knew when we did the leveling kit that we obviously needed to get the truck aligned and all of that. So knowing that we have to get the truck aligned, I had already set up things on Monday to get the alignment done and all of that. And then, you know, obviously get the shock put back in place. I don't know why I said strut tires say it was a shock that was out of place. Sometimes I just talk so fast I don't even know what I'm saying. But anyways, I knew we I kind of like already knew that that was happening. The truck though was not making any rattling sounds whatsoever. It was completely fine. Nothing like that was happening. But then come Monday, I take the truck over to get powder coated and I just want to put a quick disclaimer here. The company that powder coated the truck, really really good job. They did nothing wrong. I mean, that guy is super passionate about his work and the rims he took pictures of the rims before he had them mounted on the truck and they looked absolutely fantastic. Here's where the problem came in. I used a third party shop to take the tires and wheels off on the truck so that he could powder coat them and that's where all the problems have been coming from. It hasn't been from the leveling kit and it hasn't been from the powder coating company. It's been from that company that took the rims and tires off. They just, I don't know what the heck they did. And I thought that, okay, well these guys work with that kind of stuff all day so they can do an alignment for me as well. Obviously that's not what happened. What happened is they unscrewed a bunch of stuff apparently and made a bunch of stuff loose in the front end and not only that, they messed up the next thing on my truck, which I'm gonna go over, which is super frustrating. I'm really frustrated, and the owner of the powder coating company is really frustrated because now we have to powder coat all my rims again because of this mistake that that company made, so never gonna use them again. Now let me show you guys what actually is wrong with the rims. Hopefully it comes through in camera. Actually, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Let me see if the other wheel, it'll come through a little bit better. I'm not sure if you guys are able to see this, but it's really hard. There's a there's a line. Let me go back to the other rim so maybe you can see it over here. There's a line that goes around all of the rims. It's a very light scratch around all of the rims. I haven't rimmed the truck. So what happened is the company, like I said, that was taking off the tires and all that, they literally scratched every single one of the rims after they had gotten powder coated. And that was from the machine that puts the tires back onto the rims and whoever is using it was a complete moron. And I do not feel bad for saying that because the fact that they not only messed up stuff with the front end of the truck, but they also messed up with the rims and didn't even align the truck because you guys saw the page that I showed you yesterday, the alignment was supposed to be done from them and it was not aligned. I don't feel bad for saying that, but yeah, they scratched up every single one of the rims. So I mean, yeah, this is a huge lesson learned for me and the 
owner of Elite Powder Coating, super, super awesome guy. He's willing to go and like I said, powder coat all the rims again, even though it wasn't his fault that all the rims got scratched up, it was another company's fault. So like I said, if you do need stuff powder coated, definitely get it done through that guy. He does really good work actually. And I mean, that just goes to show the level of customer service that this guy gives, the fact that he's gonna powder coat all my rims for someone else's mistake and yeah, obviously I'm never gonna use that company again to do anything with my truck. I've had nothing but problems with the truck since then, stuff with the front end, and then with the all my freaking rims being scratched, I mean, it's stupid, it's absolutely horrible. And yeah, I need to calm down now because I'm frustrated. Okay, the last thing, and this is gonna make some of you happy because this is finally not something that's going wrong because of someone else messing up, but the keyless entry, right now it's working fine, right? So it's fine, but I've noticed, and this happened on my last truck actually, sometimes it's a little bit finicky, like I'll press the button when I get out and it will not lock, or like I'll put my hand on the back and it will not unlock. Right now it's working perfectly fine, but it's something that I might have to get checked out. It might be my first warranty claim on the truck, but like I said, that happened on my 18 and now it's happening on this truck, so kind of annoying. Ram, I don't know if that's like a mass thing. If you own a Ram and you have keyless entry, tell me if this has happened to you as well. I'd like to hear, you know, how many people have had issues with that. So now in terms of like timelines on everything, obviously you guys saw the beginning part of the video. So the truck's right now getting wrapped. So it's all getting taken apart. And hopefully that's gonna be done by Sunday. That is the plan. And then once the wrap's all done on Sunday, then first thing next week, we're gonna take all of the rims off again, obviously to get them powder coated again. And then after that's done, then we're gonna be taking it to get it all checked out with the front end, see what's happening with the front end, see if there's something loose or, I just don't know. We just gotta get that all fixed. So hopefully by next week, everything's gonna be in working order with the truck. And I'm not gonna be stressed out anymore about little things with the truck. What's with these loud diesels? Anyways, hopefully I'm not gonna be stressed out with all the stuff that's happening with the truck. And we're finally gonna have a fully functioning truck and I'm not gonna be yeah, just mad in general. Okay, well, I'm glad that I finally got to get out some of my frustration on camera so I don't have to take it out on the tire shop when, <laughs> when I talk to them next week. Obviously, it's gonna be a fun conversation. But anyways, if you are stopping for the first time, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe. This truck build that we're doing is gonna be a lot of fun and I guess that I get to make all the mistakes and have all the issues happen so that you guys don't have to have that happen when you do builds on your own personal trucks, but I will see all of you in that next video.